morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, um, depending where you are and which country you're in and what time of day you are watching this at. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for um, tuning in and for listening. Um, I'm Sarah and I am from Kingsgate and I'm just really excited to be sharing with you this morning and um, partly because the last year has been an astonishing year and astonishing in some in some really 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 positive ways and astonishing in some not very positive ways too so I just want to share with you a bit of the journey I've been on and um, hopefully encourage you in some things that God has been speaking to me about along the way. So this talk is entitled Faith and Endurance. Um, now don't judge me, um, but the last two months, okay, I've spent uh, two days a week in hospital having IV fluid treatment. Not that you'll judge me for that, it's the next bit I'm worried about. Um, and I have kind of got quite into Americans Got Talent, so AGT, and uh, it's helped me pass some of the hours, you know, when you spend now nine hours a day in a chair, in a fixed location, um, not feeling your best, uh, so managing some work but not much AGT has become a little bit of a go-to. And um, I just want to tell you about um, a story of this amazing woman, actually, and I'm sure some of you know know her. She runs under the name of Nightbird and she's a 30 year old lady and um, she's astonishing actually and she goes into AGT and um, when it's, it's actually back up and running now in America and um, she g goes up there and she starts telling her story a little bit and the judges discover that she's um, had cancer but not only has she had cancer but she's currently got cancer still and um, and she has about a two percent chance of survival anyway she um, makes this statement which um, Simon Cowell uh, looks like he's about to fall off his chair when she says it where she says I am so much more than the bad things that happened to me and everyone's like oh my goodness this lady who's just told her she's got a 2% chance of survival and has cancer in multiple organs of her body has just said, you know, it's okay. I'm so much more than the bad things that happened to me. And uh, then she starts singing this song that she's written called, It's Okay, It's Okay. You should look it up. Just type, type in Nightbird AGT and you'll get it easily. And um, anyway, there's a great moment at the end. Um, it's just going to spoil it for some of you, so close your ears if you don't like spoilers. But she wins um, the golden buzzer, which is amazing. Anyway, I am looking at the character of this woman going like, it's okay, I'm so much more than the bad things that happened to me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, what character she has in the middle of all that to be able to say that. Um, whilst I'm more like, I'm in floods of tears going, I can't take this anymore, God. Um, and I feel like sometimes parts of me are falling away and she's like, no, I'm not defined by the bad things that happened to me. I'm so much more than that. And she's actually a Christian. She believes in Jesus and um, she believes in, in being who Jesus says she is and not being defined by her circumstances. And I think that's incredible that we look at character um sometimes we think of character as, as just being better and, and doing more good things but actually real character is being who jesus says you are um not what your circumstances are trying to define you to become and not what others say you are and true character i really believe is us being transformed into the likeness of jesus and you know we've been doing this series haven't we from romans 5 and there's a there's a great little bit in here about character. So I'm going to be talking really about Romans 5, verse 3 and 4. So if I, I'll just read up to that point from Romans 5. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. And it says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. And because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand 
and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So then verse 3, and this is what we're going to focus on today. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So let me just read those two verses again. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And you know, it's a very similar passage which you may know in James 1 verse 2, where it says this, Consider it all joy. <laughs> I love that phrase. <laughs> Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And um, I love looking behind the meanings of the words. And that word consider in the Greek, I, I mean, I can try and pronounce it. It's something like haya omahi, haya omahi. But really, I'm just not, it's not going to help you at all, really. If you want to look it up, it's Strong's 2233. But um, I often think when I read that, the words like consider it all joy, it's like um, the thing that goes in my head is Bobby McFerrin's song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Um, it's like, don't worry, be happy, because every little thing is going to be all right. And I almost feel like um, it's like this sense of, come on, just get your act together, Sarah. Don't worry about everything, but just just be happy, you know. And I have to say that doesn't actually work very well with me. Um, doesn't tend to get me where I want to be. If it does for you, that's awesome. But when I look at this this word consider in the Greek, um it what it is really interesting because what it actually means is it means um that word consider means a governor or official who leads others coming first in prior priority the leading thought to rule command to have authority over and so this word consider doesn't doesn't just mean like get your act together it actually means let it let this be the leading thought that that commands and rules and has authority over all other thoughts that might be going on in your head right now, of which, and if you're like me, there's probably quite a few when you're going through a, a trial. And um, in that, and also if I look at the word joy in the Greek, um, it comes from kara, and that means to extend favour, lean towards, be favourably disposed. And properly, it's the awareness of God's grace, favour and joy. So if we put that together, then you can look at this little phrase, you know, consider it joy, being, you know, rejoice because of the awareness of God's grace. And in trials, there are there are many thoughts we can have, and, and some of mine um, I'm not going to share. But this verse is saying, you know, to let our leading thought be that this is an opportunity to rejoice because of God's grace, his favour towards me. And, I've, and I'm like, okay, I think I can get on board with this. That It's, it's not saying I don't have other thoughts or um, just just be happy. It's like, no, it's saying let, let the governing thought, let the ruling thought be this, that God's grace and God's favour is towards me right now. And in trials, as we let our awareness of God's grace rule, we're able to endure. And James 1 verse 3, it says this, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And likewise, in Romans 5, 3, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And you know, as endurance grows in us, character is formed. That character where we're transforming to become more like Christ. Um, but let's let's be honest, um, I, don't, I don't know if you can resonate with this but I've been brought up as a good charismatic Christian all my life um, and I'm actually really grateful um, for that um, there's much that my parents and my family and my just my upbringing in church has imparted into my life in the area of faith but I my sort of my outlook on faith is very much really in my upbringing being believing in you know the faith to move mountains and the faith to see the sick healed and the faith to take authority and a stand as a child of God and all that 
is is fantastic. Um, and I look at Hebrews 11, uh, which reads like the Hall of Fame for those who have great faith. And some of the fruit that you see when you, you stand in faith, and I'll just summarise some of it there here for you, but it talks about Abel, how his faith enabled his words or actions to bear eternal fruit. It talks about Noah, who had faith, how faith opened his heart um, to receive revelations and warnings of what was to come, even of things never seen before, floods, um, and faith enabled him to step out in obedience. And then Abraham, faith gave him the strength to leave the familiar and discover the land God had called him to, to walk into that land and inherit it, just on a God-given promise. It talks about Sarah, who conceived even when she was past childbearing age and had been barren for many years. And then there's Isaac, by faith he imparted blessing to his sons according to their prophetic destinies. Jacob, faith enabled him to worship. And Joseph, faith opened his eyes to see into the future even when he was dying. And, you know, we prophesied from that place. And verse 32, it says, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jeff, uh, Jephthah, I don't actually know how to pronounce that, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength, and they became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. And I think we all love this kind of expression of faith. You know, the victories, the conquering, the miracles, the strength, the, the renewing of life. Um, it's it's beautiful expression of faith and yet I find it interesting that um, Hebrews eleven thirteen, even in this list of people says all these people died still believing what God had promised them they did not receive what was promised but saw it all from a distance and welcomed it and, you know, even with great faith where we you know we've seen the victories and the mountains moved um, I, I get this sense that, you know, the, the greater the faith we have, the greater the gaps will be that we're having to stand in for the things that are unseen. Because that's actually what faith is. Faith isn't just, you know, well, like I remember when I was about 23, I saw a lady healed of cancer that I prayed for. I saw my sister healed of being cross-lateral and, and one of my other sisters healed of being dyslexic. And... Not that that had anything to do with my faith, but um, I, I, I think sometimes we can look at other people and go, oh my goodness, they have great faith because of what you can see um, that faith has achieved. And yet we look at this passage in Hebrews 11 and all these people that saw amazing things achieved also died um, standing in, in that place of welcoming the promise of God from afar, but having yet, haven't but having not yet seen the fulfilment of that promise. And you know, there are eternal promises of God that um, may well be seen in the generations after you, but that you get to welcome from a distance. But you know, this isn't actually where Hebrews 11 ends. Um, and in some ways I wish it did. But let me just read you the next bit from, and I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation, because I really like that translation. And it's verse 35 of Hebrews 11 onwards. And it says this, yet, so it's just listed all those amazing things that happened by faith. And it goes, yet, it was faith that enabled others to endure great atrocities. Yeah. They were stretched out on the wheel and tortured and didn't deny their faith in order to be freed because they longed for a more honourable and glorious resurrection. Others were mocked and imprisoned, the most severe beating with whips. They were in chains and imprisoned. Some of these faith champions were brutally killed by stoning, being sawn in two or slaughtered by the sword. These lived in faith as they went about wearing goatskins and sheepskins for clothing. They lost everything they possessed. They endured great afflictions and they were cruelly mistreated. They wandered the earth, living in the desert wilderness, in caves, on barren mountains and in holes in the earth. Truly, the world was not even worthy of them, not realising who they were. These were the true heroes, commended for their faith, 
yet they lived in hope without receiving the fullness of what was promised them. And you know, when I look at the last year, I personally feel like it's been a Hebrews 11 year um, for me personally, and um, maybe for some of you too, I don't know, but I've seen, uh, I've seen God move in a way like I've never seen before in terms of, in terms of um, the, the, the things that God has done, the favour and the blessing of God um, that has happened over the last year. And I know some of you have, well, all of you probably have heard stories that have come out over the year. And um, I sometimes people say like, oh, Sarah, do you, do you almost like, do you feel like you, you've done an amazing job? You've done this, this and this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, all that's happened over the last year, um, I am so aware that, um, without without God's favour, that it just wouldn't be happening. Um, it, it's just too miraculous for a person to achieve, if I can put it that way. And God's blessing and favour has been poured out. And you know, we put a statement at the top of the stairs of King's Gate, which which says um, more than enough, because that's in the middle of going into a, a worldwide pandemic was, you know, it's a bit of a faith statement, like God is more than enough for whatever is going to happen. And that's what we've seen. And it's been incredible, you know, right from people walking through um, Kingsgate doors who knew nothing really about what we did and just came along at the perfect time. And um, God opening doors with the council and then in other areas and, and finances coming in through grants and provision. And it's really been quite incredible, a, a little bit like the first half of Hebrews 11. Um, and yet yeah, I also look at the last year and there's, a, there's an inside story for me personally that many of you, you know, well, some of you are aware of, but many of you not maybe. And um, I've never, well, Never might be too strong a word, but it's been one of the most intensely difficult years on a personal level. So going back to just after we went into the pandemic around March, April, and I, the first thing that happened was I was struggling with um, swallowing. So I would swallow food and it would stick in my esophagus. And because of that, I got referred um, for urgent endoscopies and biopsies with the possibility of esophagus cancer. So I was referred down the cancer pathway and was a f one of the few people that got seen in the, the first few weeks of a, a pandemic just because of the urgency of how serious that kind of cancer can be. Amazingly, that, that came back negative, um, but it was quite an emotional roller coaster also because I really struggle with endoscopies. And so that was really, found that really difficult. And then shortly after that, I had, I got very painful um, ear infection, which I couldn't get seen for, um, which so it then developed into a worst ear infection. I ended up being on three lots of antibiotics and uh, that, that was actually made me quite sick. Um, so I struggled with that. And then it's like, I just got over that. That went on for about three, four weeks. And then my mum had a stroke was totally out of the blue um, and when they were looking into the reasons for that stroke she was diagnosed with cancer um, and she was actually diagnosed with cancer according to a scan and then um, if, uh, a few weeks later two three weeks later after that they then retracted that diagnosis and but again you know it was quite a, a journey watching my mum um, who's such a strong, vivacious, travels the world person, um, have a stroke, that, that was really hard. And then to, to deal with the diagnosis of cancer. And, and that cancer diagnosis actually also came um, whilst I was in hospital um, because it happened over sort of the August period. And I'd, you know, as you know, some of you know, I'd had a really good year health-wise prior to all of that. And I ended up having one of the worst flare-ups um, I think I've ever had. And I had to be tube-fed. I was in hospital for three and a half weeks, also dealing, it wasn't allowed really hardly any visitors, dealing with my mum being diagnosed with cancer, also listening to people on the ward being told they they were diagnosed with cancer. It, it was just, to be honest, the head bender was, was not a good thing. Um, so I came around from that in September um, and things were quite busy as you know with have been very busy with work as well and then 
I caught COVID. Um, and unlike um, quite a few people who, like my brother who coughed once and that was it for him, I caught it really badly and ended up um, in January in hospital for two and a half weeks. The combination of COVID pneumonia, pleurisy and asthma is not a good combo. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and But I think part of the trauma of that time for me was I saw two people in the bay I was in die of COVID. And hearing people die of COVID um, is, isn't something I'm, I'm going to forget in, in a hurry. And that was, it was really hard. Um, and, I, you know, also saw other people discharged with long-term chronic conditions. And when I left hospital, um, I also started getting migraines. Well, they started with COVID, actually. And for the last six months, those migraines have continued every four to five days and have been completely debilitated debilitating um also developed um, an increased problem with my heart with tachycardia so I'm now under cardiology recently one of my sisters has like the last few weeks one of my sisters has had a pulmonary embolism it's going through tests like that I mean honestly the, the year has been relentless in what's come and um and so I look back and I was like oh my goodness this year has been this crazy mix of um incredible victories and yet incredible incredible and not in such a good way endurance um but you know a big hope of mine and may, I don't know if your year's been similar I'm sure there's been elements of endurance I can't imagine how you got through this year without having to endure um quite a few things and and it can be discouraging at times and sometimes when you're facing the pain and the grief and the disappointment of all of all of of, in, of what you're enduring it can feel like your faith is um diminishing and actually i look at stuff like this and go do you know what faith and endurance is what produces character in us and and a big hope of mine is that in all our endurance that god is developing a beautiful character in us you know that we're becoming more like him and um i just i think sometimes we we have this view of faith is just us seeing or achieving the miraculous but faith isn't that it's it's our ability to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus and after all of that in Hebrews 11 it goes on in Hebrews 12 to say this it says therefore since we also have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us let's rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us and let's run with endurance the race that is set before us looking only at Jesus the originator and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And you know, I just want to encourage you that faith is our ability to fix our eyes upon Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Faith is staying reconciled to God. Um, reconciled means, you know, standing in that place of truth of who we are in him, no matter what the circumstances are saying, and standing in the incredible richness of our salvation, his mercy, his grace, his truth, and coming quickly to the throne of grace to find help when sin, grief, disappointment, hurt, or offence surround us. So looking only at Jesus fixing our eyes upon him and that's what develops the character of God in us this is how we are perfected this is how we become more like him um like Nightbird said I'm so much more than the bad things that happen you know endurance develops that strength of character and character strengthens our, co our confident hope of salvation and you know we all hate it when we feel continuously exhausted or run down but you know, how else do we learn that God is our sustainer? Nobody enjoys, I don't think, losing a job and feeling like they can't provide. But how else do we prove that God is our provider? And, you know, I hate weakness and physical limitations, anxiety. But, you know, it's in these places that we can lean into God and discover that he is our strength. And that when we let our leading and governing thoughts be the awareness of God's grace, there's a joy that can come into those places. So that's, that's my prayer for us today, that we will fix our eyes on Jesus, that we will lean into him, that we'll be encouraged and that we'll see the, the, the very character of Jesus developed in us. So thank you Kingsgate um, and anybody else who's tuned in. Thank you for listening and um, sending all my love.